Today is the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass this morning is being offered for Veronica Novak. This week's second collection will be for the Cemetery Upkeep. Mass this Wednesday will be at 6.30 to celebrate the parish founding, and a social distancing ice cream social will follow. There will be no Mass this Friday, and we, of course, encourage you to be COVID-free, avoid large crowds, especially strangers, socially distance yourself, wear a mask, and wash your hands often. Please pray with me the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruler of souls. Amen. And please rise and greet Father Bill.
do not return there till they have water the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its plots, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. <clears throat> You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your path overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing clothes the hills. The sea that falls on the ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The sea that falls on the ground. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is growing in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves, as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, 
hundred or sixty or thirty fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven have been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but they do not see, and hear but they do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in it, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand, you shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people that will hardly hear with their ears, they have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but it has no root and lasts for only a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then when worldly anxiety and the Lord of riches choke off the word, it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. The Gospel of the Lord. I think many of us, especially those of us that have to travel, especially in places we're not really certain of how to get there, say that the, the GPS is invaluable. Uh, you just plug in the address and we'll take you right to the door. Well, sometimes. <laughs> There's always some detour that the GPS doesn't understand. There's always some update that you missed. And then there is always the fact that the GPS will be containers. Did you ever drive and the GPS says to you, turn left in 30 feet, turn left in 30 feet. Well, I turn left and recalculate, recalculate, make a U-turn, do this, go here, go there. Well, the left-hand turn I made in 20 feet instead of 30 feet. It was something that I was totally unaware of. Something that I messed up. But then, of course, are you as weird as I and you love to play with the GPS as mine? You plug in the GPS, but you know a shortcut, and the GPS starts spazzing out because you're going all these routes that the GPS doesn't want you to go on, and yet you know you're going to get there. It kind of fits in with the gospel today. How do we get to God? What path do we take to get to God? Some of us will take detours. Some of us will end up in the middle of traffic jams. Some of us will just become totally lost. Some of us will try and do what's right and end up getting frustrated. But if we trust in the Lord, the Lord will get us where we need to be. We need to trust in God's hands. We hear in the gospel today, blessed are the ears to hear, blessed are the eyes that see. That go beyond the GPS machines that tell us to go here and there. But to trust in our heart. 
the way that we need to go. We hear that in the sowing of the seed there are many distractions, things that choke us off, things that will make us wither, things that will tramp us underfoot, all kinds of things that will miss us. But in the end, God will always get us back on the path that we need to be. We ask the Lord then, and wherever our travels take us, but most especially our physical journeys, when we allow frustration and sin and anxiety to get in our way, we always will hear Jesus speaking to us. We'll always see Jesus showing us the way. And truly, we will get there. And when we do, we will bear fruit.
look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that we might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
prayer against the coronavirus. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from coronavirus, COVID-19, and all serious illness. For all those who have died from it, have mercy. For those that are ill now, bring healing. For those searching for a remedy, enlighten them. For medical caregivers helping the sick, strengthen and shield them. For those working to contain the spread, grant them success. For those afraid, grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may you turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. May we always fear the contagion of sin more than any illness. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, in saving of 
effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, especially with the resurgence of coronavirus throughout most of the country, thank goodness we're still pretty safe here in Pennsylvania. The outbreaks, as we know, are in Pittsburgh and the Philadelphia area. But it isn't a time for us to let our guard down, and that's the reason why this is on the uptick again. So please remember to avoid large crowds, especially where you're going to be with strangers. Please socially distance yourselves. As much as there are great big pain, please remember to wear your mask. It's now been determined that COVID is just as much a respiratory problem and an airborne problem. So your mask protects you from me and my mask protects me from you. So uh, please remember to do that. And also the notion of frequent hand washing. So let's try and keep each other safe. And you know, I don't think any of us want to be away from church the way that we were in the past. I'm glad to see that more and more of our parishioners are, are starting to come out. On Saturday night at 4 o'clock, we're still going to continue with the Mass in the cemetery, unless it rains. But this way, we uh, can do it outside, so those people that have this phobia for masks, they don't have to wear them. And uh, it's, just, it's just a very nice atmosphere, so we're going to do that. Also, as you heard Mary Lou with the announcements, this Wednesday is the anniversary of the founding of our parish. We'll have a Mass here on Wednesday night at 6.30. And we'll also have uh, an ice cream social, socially distant, if you want to hang around, or you can take your ice cream and go. So, hope to see you there. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by you.